Welcome to Channel Eight Results, where we play a different deck list every video. I'm Country Fried, and today we have Azorius Artifacts. Uh, it's historic Azorius Artifacts, guys. Look, uh, standard meta is just kind of stale. I kind of wanted to just take a break from it. I wanted to play a real simple deck. I read an article on a website, MTG Arena Zone, but you had to have a premium membership for the article, so I'm not suggesting do that. But this was their top deck for the easiest way to get to mythic and i was like well cool let me take it out and try it i don't know half of these cards i mean i kind of have working knowledge of them but not a whole lot uh let me see how easy it is to pilot and you guys are gonna see the <laughs> you guys are gonna see a whole lot of misplays in game one i forgot to record game two but you got a game three as well i went three for three it's undefeated i'm gonna let you guys get to the deck list and then the gameplay and i'll see you guys at the end of the video as well so hopefully you guys enjoy this let's go ahead and take a look so yeah, I just figured we'd dive into something different today. I wanted something different to play. I do apologize for the late video again, but let's go ahead and take a look at this deck list, man. It's a lot of fun. I would say probably tested out a couple times. There's a lot of interactions. I just dove into it and played it, and uh, that's my fault. But uh, it's so easy to play that even somebody who has no idea what the interactions of this deck are can just dive into play it. I, I did. I did. You guys could see from the first game that, uh, that I you're going to see a lot of misplays. <laughs> and then the second game I forgot to record, but it was super easy against an Orzhov discard uh, exile deck. And then uh, the third game was a whole lot smoother, and you you really get to see a lot of the different interactions going on with this deck. The one that we did kind of miss was the Foundry that happened to pop off in the Orzhov uh gameplay and that was the one i forgot to record and i wish we could have showcased that but for the sake of time let's go ahead and look at this deck list so you guys get to the gameplay so just for some removal we got the artifact the portable hole uh you can exile any uh non-land permanent your opponent controls with mana value two or less with it so really useful especially in historic with a lot of the enchantments rolling around and stuff and just the smaller creatures that you're going to see pop up in like mono reds and stuff like that uh, we got a counter in Metallic Rebuke, which is two colorless, one blue, but you can improvise, and by improvise, your uh, artifacts can cast this spell too. Each artifact you can take, uh, tap, can pay for one colorless, so you can literally cast it for one blue as long as you've got two other artifacts on the board, which you can use portable holes for this as well. And what it is is counter target spell unless it's controller pays three, and this deck moves fast enough that your opponent has to stay on curve, so a really useful counter. Um, we've also got moon snare prototype in here it's a one blue artifact that you can drop of course you can tap an untapped artifact or a creature you control and add one colorless if you tap prototype or you can use it for his channel ability which is for five discard uh moon snare prototype and the owner of the target non-land permanent puts it on the top or the bottom of their library and you're going to see this actually showcased in one match really heavily uh came in really clutch for us i was a little hesitant with this card when i first read it uh but now i'm a fan especially in this deck list uh retrofit or foundry it's a one cost it's an artifact you pay three you can untap uh the foundry you pay two you create a one one colorless servo artifact creature token you pay one you sacrifice a ser servo and you create a one one colorless thopter artifact and then you tap again uh for nothing and sacrifice a thopter and you can create a four four colorless construct artifact now the reason that i really uh I'm kind of unpleased with the fact that I forgot to hit record on that second game was because we did get a Thopter on the ground and we popped this and created it for a 4-4 and it's just one of our zero cost Thopters. So it really works hand in hand with these two and that 4-4 just closed out the game. We had a whole handful of uh, the Metallic Rebukes. I think we had three of the four of them and we just kept utilizing them and kept our mana open and just kept closing the game with that 4-4 and we did. We shut out the game. We just kept countering everything that our opponent was playing uh so really useful but uh yeah these two went hand in hand and it was beautiful i wish i would have hit record for that game it went kind of fast i feel bad for it but uh definitely take it out take it for a spin it was a lot of fun especially the interactions uh shadow spear one of my favorite artifacts honestly so i was really happy to see it within this deck list and uh, equip creature gets plus one plus one and has trample and life link you can pay one and permanent your opponent's control lose hexproof and indestructible until the end of turn and then your equip cost is two uh you're gonna see in the first game where i misplay this i think i paid the one on it and permanent my opponent control <laughs> lose hexproof and indestructible and i'm pretty sure i threw my opponent off because I, there was nothing to make hexproof or indestructible 
I was just, like I said, I went into this deck list blind and uh, you'll see, you'll see how blind I was. <laughs> so that's what it's for. Uh, we got three uh, Ornithopters. Again, it's just a zero for a zero two flying creature. You can utilize as a blocker, but really works really well with Retrofit or Foundry. You can literally get a uh, four four on the field. So at turn one, if you got this on the field and you cast this for zero and it's your opponent's turn, um, at the end of their turn, just sacrifice the Thopter to this and you'll have a four four on the field going into your second turn. It's absolutely ridiculous if you can do that uh it's a beautiful little combo uh esper sentinel is our one drop of choice it's one one whenever an opponent casts their first non-creature spell each turn draw a card unless that payer plays x where x is esper sentinel's power look you can pump up uh, esper sentinel if you want to but you do more often than not you don't have to they're just not going to pay it they got other things that they want to cast as well and you're just going to keep drawing like crazy and this deck has a really low curve so uh yeah it's just like hitting a jackpot. So Esper Sentinel is an absolute must-have in this. Uh, Ingenious Smith is a one colorless, one white, one one. Um, really cool card. When it enters the battlefield, you look at the top four cards of your library. You may reveal an artifact card from among them and put it into your hand and then put the rest on the bottom of your library in random order. So you can get a Thopter and just turn around and cast it and turn this into a 2-2. Because whenever one or more artifacts enter the battlefield under your control, you put a plus one, plus one counter on the smith, and this ability only triggers once each turn. However, you got a bunch of artifact lands, too, that count for this as well. Sorry, maybe not a bunch, maybe just six, but still, uh, they drop the one-one counters on smith as well. We have a living creature in here. Uh, uh, I don't know if you, or I'm sorry, a living weapon. I don't know if you guys have seen these before, but this was kind of, living weapons kind of came in huge back when uh, I think it was New Phyrexia came out and stuff. And we started seeing the germ tokens and stuff like that. Um, I can't remember the one. I think it was like Boneyard or something like that. So it was the first one that I really liked playing a lot. But this one is Nettlesist. Nettle Cyst is a living weapon. Equipped creature gets plus one, plus one for each artifact or uh, enchantment you control. So you drop it in, it automatically gets attacked to a zero, zero Phyrexian germ. However, you can equip it equip it to something else for two and your germ will die off but it will get plus one plus one for all the uh, artifacts that you've got on the board and we got a crap ton of them again lands counting too so i like to try and get it attached to one of the flyers if at all possible uh really just kind of go over the top of the opponent's hand uh, Thought Monitor comes in. It's a seven drop for a two two. It has affinity for artifacts. It's flying. And then when Thought Monitor enters the battlefield, you draw two cards. And any type of draw in this deck list is just gas because it just wants to, you know, put the pedal to the, or put the pedal to the floor and just fly. So uh, Thought Monitor, the real big thing on it is the affinity for artifacts. So every artifact you've got on the field, it takes off that colorless, that six cost. So you can get it as far down as to just one blue. Uh, really not as hard to cast as what it looks like in the casting cost, especially with this deck list. So don't be afraid. Um, you're just going to get a card draw off of it. And it's a beautiful thing. And then Karn Scion of Urza is our planeswalker it's four drop you reveal the top two cards of your library an opponent chooses one of them you put that card in your hand and then exile the other with a silver counter on it it's negative one is put a card you own with a silver counter on it from exile into your hand and then of course the negative two is create a zero zero colorless construct artifact creature token with this creature's gets plus one plus one for each artifact you control so you can literally just drop this in and have a huge creature right off the right off the bat but uh that is what karn's for now this deck list comes from mtg arena zone so it is set up for best of three and when i leave the uh, link for the deck list in the description below i'll leave the sideboard as well and if you guys want to check out the list it was in an article on mtg arena zone for like the top five decks easiest way to make mythic and this was the top deck on the list so i don't want you to to think that this is my deck list it's not it came from mtg arena so great website but it does have a premium membership and i'm not telling anybody to go buy that we're not sponsored however
Okay. Uh, our lands, we've got a Plains, Ottawa, a Soaring City. Uh, use this to bounce stuff if you absolutely need to. You're going to see that in a game where that comes in really handy. And then just a bunch of lands that can help us mana fix our colors. The one that I really didn't like was Razor Tide Bridge because it comes into the battlefield tapped. However, it is an artifact land, which helps us with our affinity for artifacts just across the board. And of course, it's indestructible, so it's not going to get blown up by a land hate deck. And then we've got Dark uh, Steel Citadel, again, indestructible artifact land. And then Spire of Industry, you can pop it and add a color if you absolutely need to by paying one la life, and you can only activate that is if you control an artifact, and you're going to control a ton of artifacts. So there you guys go, man. Real fast deck, real easy deck. I just figured a breather away from, um, you know, the meta with standard. And uh, like I said, if you want just a really fast deck and you got the wild cards for it, then this is it. And like I said, I went into this blind, so it's not that hard to play. <laughs> Anyways, guys, I'm going to bounce out of here and let you guys get to the gameplay. I'll see you guys at the end of the uh, video for the wrap. And until then, stay safe, be happy, and healthy. Peace. Hope you guys enjoy the gameplay. We'll see you. All right, we go first. Uh, yeah, we'll keep it. Take Ornithopter off of this, cast it for zero. Hopefully we get another land, that'd be great. Still need another land, but we can we can uh, equip this for one. Okay. <laughs> okay, let's go here. That was a mistake on my part. Come on, land. Okay. Mm, we'll pass. Not too worried about it. We'll portable hole. Good lord, man. It would probably help if I could play this deck.
Ah, man. What is going on? It won't work. Yeah. Um, let's see. It's all colorless. Let's go here. Sure. They can start using their wishing wells. That should be it for us. I mean, we should be good from here. Okay, so easy an idiot can play it. <laughs> it's what you get going into it dry. All right. Test the live fire first. GG. This month's Patreon rewards features some of the most impactful lotuses in Magic's history. Check out all the details and sign up at patreon.com slash it resolves. This is actually my third game because I forgot to hit record, but uh, we go first. Oh, yeah, we'll definitely keep this. We'll keep. Take that. Probably gonna blow up something, I would imagine. Go ahead. <laughs> Everybody knows it's coming. <laughs> Everybody knows. Another good one. Gonna take six damage or five damage. Very cool, very cool.
Hmm. Choices, choices, choices. Sure. I mean, if they just fill up the board, there's not a whole lot we can do. I'm guessing they're going with that. And then right into Thraben. Yeah. Maybe one of the uh, the living weapons to come off top. Geez, damn, that was close, man. Damn, but yeah, I mean, we did. We went three games in a row with this. Uh, I just forgot to record one, but GG's. It was gameplay. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed it. Again, like I said, this is not my deck list. This came out of the top five easiest decks to make uh, Mythic with from MTG Arena Zones article, and it was the top deck on the list. And I just wanted to take it out to see how easy it was. Uh, can somebody who's never played it? pilot it can it be piloted with little to no knowledge reading the cards which anybody who knows this channel knows i hate to read cards and i did and you saw that first game uh it was a mess it was a disaster but we still won uh, i played it for three games i wish i would have recorded all three because that orzov matchup really showcased the ornithopter and the uh, retrofitter foundry and uh i just forgot to hit record so i'm an idiot but uh if you guys want to check out that article it is on mtg arena zone but i think you've got to be a premium member member and i'm not going to tell you guys to go do that but they do have a lot of great articles but you can find articles for free on tcg player and stuff like that as well there's plenty of places for free articles but mtg arena zone's got some really cool stuff and uh yeah guys that's all i got and it was a lot of fun super easy to do uh we went three for three so undefeated so there you go and with that guys stay safe be happy and healthy until next time peace much love guys have a great one